If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrolf. Nimble Obstructionist. A 3 mana, 2 in blue. Flash, flying, cycling, and when you cycle, you can counter a triggered or activated ability that you don't control. It's like a- it's a Billy Mays commercial, but wait, there's more! Okay, so- and it's a 3-1 at that. It's our little Vendillion click. It's this standard's Vendillion click. It even has the wizard subtype. It's a bird wizard. Which actually makes it all that much cooler, I suppose. But yeah, this is a- this is the creature that so far I am the most excited for in Hour of Devastation. I say creature because Nico Bolas is also pretty sick, but certainly for creatures, and I'll, I'll get more into that in just a second. I should note, this isn't quite Vendillion Click, as LSV pointed out in his reveal on Channel Fireball. This does require that you choose between it being a creature or being disruption, but you don't get both like you would with, say, Vendillion Click. But that also makes sense, because on the one hand, the mana cost is easier to get. Instead of being one in blue, blue, it's two in blue. For another, you are... Uh, how would you say? When you Vendillion click somebody, yourself or your opponent, you take one of their cards, potentially, and they'll get a card back. But you get some selection over that. When you cycle, you discard the uh, Obstructionist and you draw a card. It's a little bit more random, I suppose. And so because you have less control, you expect that you're going to get a little bit less out of that. That's just the nature of cycling versus let me look at your hand and select something. That all said, that all being the case, this is still this is definitely standard playable. And this is probably probably eternal playable. Think of, for example, the other wizards that show up in Eternal formats, Modern, Legacy, even Vintage. We're talking Snapcaster Mage, we're talking Meddling Mage, we're talking Avon Mines. Avon Mind Sensor is a bird wizard as well. How cool is that? I'm already imagining in my head a Legacy uh, Blue-White Wizards deck, some Azorius. I guess you'd still want to run Stoneforge Mystic somewhere, even though it's not a wizard, but you get the idea. These disruptive creatures have the same subtype, and therefore Cavern can be playable. Also, bear in mind that right now, Modern doesn't really have a whole lot of blue, except, let's see, there's uh, Stubborn Denial and Spell Pierce and Grixis Shadow, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's about it. Giving blue a creature that can also disrupt might give it something in Modern, in Legacy, etc. You get the idea. While I'm here, though, let me point out a little bit, and by the way, Fluctuator. <laughs> Just for casual play, Fluctuator. Blue, and it becomes Stifle, withdraw a card. Okay, but that's just the, that's the Johnny and me wanting to do that. Regardless, regardless, Nimble Obstructionist is another example of a trend that's been going on in Magic the Gathering, especially in Standard, of course, because the newest cards come out of that, uh, that I've been calling Creature Creep, which is not necessarily that the creatures are getting more powerful, they are, but it's the way that they're getting more powerful. They're taking on roles that used to be occupied by other cards. So a long time ago, and repeatedly since then, Mark Rosewater has talked about on Blogatog how the most popular card types are creatures and planeswalkers. People just like playing creatures and planeswalkers. And that makes sense in a way. This is very different than the old school version of Magic where, what was it, a uh, Grey Ogre <laughs> cost three mana? Grey Ogre cost three mana. And now we're getting Stifle on a creature that draws you a card and is a 3-1 flash. Or there was Rule of Law, then it became Eidolon of Rhetoric. Or there was, say, um, I'm trying to think of it. Spell Queller kind of does this, kind of. 
I mean, it's it's a counter spell on a creature to be sure, but it's also not Oubliette. It's um oh, not Journey to Nowhere. Oh, it's that sort of as long as this remains on the field. Banisher. Why am I not thinking of Oblivion Ring? There we go. It's like what happens if you take a counter spell and Oblivion Ring and put them together. You get Spell Queller. It, it itself is syncretic of multiple types of cards. Uh, creatures that draw you a card when they enter the battlefield have been around in Magic since forever. Uh, but that in and of itself was a... Dr I don't know, you get the point, you get what I'm saying. This is another example of it, and while it isn't very well suited for me, I like playing non-creatures, I appreciate that if they're going this route, they're at least giving us effects that we haven't seen at the power level that I would have liked in some time. And maybe this breathes some fresh air, some new life into some old decks in modern. I'd like to see this played right alongside a Snapcaster Mage and a Click in a modern blue control deck, or blue X control deck. Alright, that rambling aside, I need coffee. I need coffee. And there is none left. <laughs> and I will see you all later. Thank you for le thank you for hearing me out. And if you have any uh, other spoilers you want me to cover, if you have any questions you want me to do a separate video on, please feel more than free to let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to. That's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Cheers.